Hello to all of my amazing subscribers. I hope you all had a great start to 2024 and that continues for the rest of the year and everybody remains positive uh, like you do in the comment section. I appreciate that. Um, anyway, this video I'm going to focus on the number 144. I'm also going to talk about 2024, 1924, 1974 and 1972. So about a month ago, I made a video titled Revolution 9, which was inspired by the Beatles. And I began in 1896, uh, where the midpoint was 1968, and I went forwards and backwards, adding by nine years, a total of 72 years either side of 1968. And adding 72 years to 1968 brought me out to 2040, and from 1896 to 2040 is a total of 144 years. And I also found that 108 years had passed between the first modern Olympic Games in Athens in 1896 to the second time Athens held the modern Olympic Games in 2004. And it was interesting to see when I added another 108 years to 2004, it brought me all the way out to 2112, so a little palindrome. And so I decided to work with 144 again uh, because this time I wanted to see what I would find if I added 144 years to each Phoenix date. For example, um, 1902 plus 144 brings us out to 2046, which, of course, um, Jason of Archaics has described the Nemesis X object. So, yeah, so... What I did was I, I went from 1902 and I subtracted 138 from 1902, which brought me to 1764. And then I added 144 years to 1764, which brings me back up to 1908, which uh, was the Tunguska event. And interestingly, 1908 plus 144 equals 2052, which is the dark satellite. Um, and all of these terms and references come from archaics. So they're not my my terms or references. But um, So anyway, back to 1908. The Tunguska event was approximately a 12 megaton explosion that occurred in Russia on the morning of June 30th, 1908. Um, the explosion flattened an estimated 80 million trees over an area of 2,150 kilometres squared or 830 square miles of forest. And eyewitness reports suggest that at least three people may have died in the event. And the, the interesting thing here is the midpoint between 1908 and 2052 is the year 1980. Uh, so there's 60 years between 1980 and 2040. And the number 60 is significant. And as Jason always says, and I quote, if something is true, it can be seen from multiple mathematical vantage points. So about the number 60, the sexagesimal, also known as base 60, is a numeral system with 60 uh, as its base. It originated with the ancient Sumerians and was passed down to the ancient Babylonians and is still used in a modified form for measuring time, angles and geographic coordinates. Uh, this base 60 system was later adopted by the ancient Greeks and is the reason we have 60 seconds in a minute uh, 60 minutes in an hour, and the number 60 has been significant in various cultures and has influenced timekeeping, mathematics, and astronomy. Okay, so what happened in 1980, 60 years prior to 2040? So in 1980, the Earth shook, it erupted, collapsed, caught fire, and spawned vicious storms with regularity, killing tens of thousands of people around the world. On 18th of May, uh, in 1980, Mount St. Helens volcano exploded in a cataclysmic event. The events that took place at Mount St. Helens in 1980 turned the immediate surrounding area into a wasteland, destroying plants, trees, and entire ecosystems, dramatically altering the landscape. Uh, 57 people were killed, including volcanologists, loggers, and campers and reporters. Um, also in 1980, an earthquake rocked Algeria killing between 5,000 and 25,000 people. Well, that's a big gap. So I don't know, was it 5,000 or 25,000, but leaving 250,000 people homeless. 
Uh, even as relief aid came, pouring in a week later, three more tremors shook northwest western Algeria, raising the overall death toll to at least 6,000. Um, and again in uh, 1980, on November 23rd, a massive earth str- earthquake struck southern Italy. Buildings and homes crumbled to the ground, more than 3,000 people were killed, and nearly 2,000 were missing and feared dead. And it was the worst earthquake to hit Europe in 65 years. So, back to um, where I was, where I started this, which was 1902 minus 138, which brought us to 1764. I, I added 144 years to 1764, which uh, brought me out to 1908. Okay, so 1764 minus 138 is 1626. So I added um, 144 to 1626, and that brought me out to uh, back up to 1770. And for multiple days in 1770, a swath of sky over Japan, the Korean Peninsula, and the eastern coast of China looked as if it had been set ablaze, illuminated in a scorching red light. Uh, Nobody knew what caused it, and we only knew it happened thanks to a few scant recordings that survived the intervening centuries. It wasn't until modern astronomy gave us a better understanding of aurora events centuries later that we learnt what prompted it. Um, A magnetic storm caused by solar activity activity likely struck Earth's atmosphere, creating a crimson spectacle few people have seen since. And new documents reveal that there is a lot more to the story than just a red hue to the sky. A team of Japanese researchers unearthed a trove of 111 historical documents in East uh, Asia that showed that the red auroral display actually lasted not two days as first thought, but nine days from September the 10th to September 19th. And the storm may have been the longest geomagnetic storm on human record, and the region of sky it covered was twice as large as historians initially thought. So 1626, I added 144 years, which brought me out to 1770. So 1626 minus 138 brings me to um, 1488. 1488 plus 144 brings me back up to 1632. And from 1632 to 1641, the Little Ice Age began to cause drastic climate changes in the Ming Dynasty. For example, rainfall in the Hubei region dropped by 11% to 47% from the historical average. Droughts dominated northern China, while floods dominate in the south. Erratic climate patterns led to increased precipitation, which led to floods along major rivers. Fields were flooded over and entire villages disappeared under the waves. Hails were frequent, with one record from the Annals of Ming stating there was hail which killed more than 50 men, women and children, and countless livestock, and all crops were destroyed. Okay, so 1488 plus 138 brings me back to 1350. 1350 plus 144 brings me back up to uh, 1494, which was the uh, Yellow River Flood. Um, It was a natural disaster in China, and it it basically was just a a massive flood that occurred there. So 1350 minus 138 brings me out to 1212. Uh, 1212 plus 144 brings me back up to 1356. And in 1356, there was a, uh, a huge earthquake uh, that occurred in Central Europe, and it's, I think it's one of the largest. Yeah, it says it has a monument magnitude in the range of 6.0 to 7.1, and this earthquake occurred on October 18 in 1356. Okay, so 1212 minus 138 brings us to 1074. And 1074 plus 144 brings me back up to 1218, which was the um, the uh, fifth crusade mission to attack cities in North Africa. And what happened during that time in November, on the 29th of November, it's recorded that a storm lasting for three days floods the crusader camp, devastating the crusaders' supplies and transportation. And after the camp is repaired, a serious epidemic strikes the crusader forces and the victims suffer from high fever, and at least a sixth of the soldiers die during the severe winter, and the survivors are left um, enfeebled and depressed. Okay, so 1074 
minus 138 brings us down to 936. 936 plus 144 brings us um, back up to 1080. And 1080 is um, an interesting number. Anyone who follows Jason's work knows the significance of the number 1080, the number relating to the completion of the Great Pyramid, uh, 90 years or 1080 months. And the number 1080 is extraordinary. Uh, Jason provides reference to the number 108 and 1080 in many other areas of his research, not only relating to the Great Pyramid, but 108 being an ancient mystical number and a number of great change in one's spiritual life. The other thing that's interesting is that 936 is divisible by 72. And another thing about the number 936 and 144 is if you times 936 by 2, you end up with 1,872, which is just 2178 jumbled up. And 144 times 12 is uh, 1,728, which is 2178 jumbled up. So all of these dates and numbers relating to historical events further demonstrate the workings of a mathematical construct. And the, the year 936 is where I ended this because I couldn't find anything significant in 1080 apart from that being a number which stood out to me. And 936 is 1,104 years before 2040. So that's 8 times 138. So, yeah, like 1080 um, divided by 72 is 15. 1074 minus um, 138 brought me to 936. And then from 936, adding 144 brings me back up to 1080. But, yeah, uh, uh, 1080 plus 144 times 4, which is 576, brings us to 1656 uh, in our common era. So 1656 is a very significant date as well. So it's just funny how you find these numbers, the patterning of these numbers, uh, regardless of there being anything major, the numbers themselves are very interesting that these subtracting and adding these numbers brings you to numbers that Jason has spoken about as part of um, the programming um, in the construct. So 1556 is apparently the deadliest day in human history. Uh, and While it's hard to say with certainty, by many accounts, the deadliest day in human history was actually the result of a natural disaster. Uh, on the morning of uh, 23rd of January 1556, a massive earthquake rocked China's Shanxi province at the time considered the cradle of Chinese civilization, and the quake only lasted a few seconds, but it's estimated to have directly killed 100,000 people, with um, the ensuing cascade of landslides, sinkholes, fires, migration and famine, killing an estimated total of 830,000 people. Now, it's uh, that's nowhere near as high as the total death tolls of major events like World War One and World War Two, or even pandemics, famines or floods. But when uh, considering a single day of devastation, this uh, Shangzi earthquake, because it struck under the reign of the Zhejiang Empire of the Ming Dynasty, it's widely considered the most fatal we know of. It's also listed as the deadliest recorded earthquake in history. One thing I noticed when putting all of this together was the reoccurrence of China and that region. I mean, they just constantly come up when I'm doing this research. So we know. China is supposed to be pretty much the epicenter of where this Phoenix event is going to occur in 2040. Now, I'm going to talk about uh, this year. Uh, 2024 reflects 1972 over the 1998 flip date, and 1973 is obviously in the middle of 1972 and 1974, and it is exactly 100 years from 1924 to 2024 right in the middle of 1924, and 2024 is 1974. And on September 15th, 1974, there was a grenade attack in Paris. Two men died and 34 others were uh, severely injured. And this was Carlos the Jackal, right? So he was accused of throwing a hand grenade from a restaurant into a shopping area in the Latin Quarter of Paris, and two people were killed. And the reason I'm bringing this story up is because 1974 is right in between the 1924 Paris Olympics and the 2024 yet-to-come Paris Olympics. 
and this event was classed as a, as a terrorist attack. And some of you listening may already be aware of the Munich uh, massacre, which was a terrorist attack carried out during the 1972 Summer Olympics in West Germany by eight members of the Palestinian militant organization Black September. So, yeah, in between 1924 and 2024 is 1974, Carlos the Jackal, and 2024 reflects 1972. So in both 72 and 1974, um, some events occurred in which people were killed um, and 2024 may reflect the events of 1972 and 1974. And one last piece of data that I came across just by accident, the story goes that a scarlet fan spread across the skies of Japan and according to historical records on December 30th, 620, a red sign shaped like a pheasant tail appeared in the sky, and at the time the sign was considered a bad omen. Uh, modern scientists looking back at the report have wondered whether the spectacle may have been caused by an aurora or a comet. And 2024, subtract 620, and yep, you guessed it, that equals 1,404. So there's your 144 again. It's quite fascinating. And that's where I'll end this video. I think this is probably one of the longest ones I've done. So if you made it all the way to the end, thank you for staying. I appreciate it. And I hope you have a great day, night, wherever you are. And stay awesome. Catch you later.